So first and foremost, guys, NVIDIA is no longer just a semiconductor company. Not at all. In fact, it's a platform. In this latest GTC event, this keynote from Jensen Wong, the CEO, it was absolutely mind-boggling. I've watched it three times. It's 90 minutes long. I've watched it three times, and I've spent hours on top of that editing. I've probably got a dozen hours into this, and I'm bringing this video, just putting it together concisely as I can in minutes. I'm going to break down the company, what it looks like today, NVIDIA, as a platform. Then I'm going to go into my five highlights, really, from the keynote. So the five key takeaways from this keynote that really just left me just absolutely in awe, guys. I mean, I, I literally got done watching it the first time, and I was like, I need to go buy more NVIDIA. Now I'm up on NVIDIA like 600%. It's 5 6% of my portfolio. But I'm looking at it saying, man, I, I need to buy more of this stock. Is it cheap? No, it's expensive. But I'm telling you, man, nobody even comes close to these guys when you start digging under the hood what they're doing. So let's break it down in this video. You're going to want to see this one. Stay tuned. NVIDIA is pioneering accelerated computing, an approach that demands full stack expertise. We built NVIDIA like a computing stack, a neural network. So on this keynote, they announced new products across their entire stack, and there's really four layers to their stack. The first is hardware, and that's what most people think in video oh, is hardware, semiconductors, equipment for graphics, processors, things like that. So that's the first layer. The second layer is system software. Then they have platform software, and now they have applications. And they really allow their customers to use these how they please, whatever's best for their business needs. Now, from these four layers, guys, these four layers are driving five dynamics, is what Jensen Wong called them. The first is million X computing. In fact, they want to grow computing again by another million X in the next 10 years. So in the last 10 years, they've increased computing power by a million X. The second thing they talked about was transformers and how they're turbocharging AI. Third is data centers are becoming AI factories for these large businesses that have huge amounts of data that they can mine and use to their advantage to, to help with their customers, with selling products, all sorts of different use cases. Number four, exponential increase in demand for robotic systems, especially when you think of warehouses, think of Amazon, they use tons of robots within their warehouses. And number five, this is big guys, digital twins for the next generation of AI. I'm gonna break this down for you. I'm gonna show you my five favorite highlights or my five favorite takeaways from this keynote presentation. Let's take a look at what Maxine can do. NVIDIA Maxine reinvents real-time video communication with the magic of AI. Thanks to Maxine, we can now hear and see each other better, and we feel more connected and included, even when language becomes a barrier. To stay engaged with my audience, Maxine helps me keep eye contact with everyone on the call. Okay, hold the phone. You guys seeing this? I mean, it might not feel like a big deal, but think about this for a second. I can be reading a teleprompter or a script and my eyes are glued to you as the audience. This is a huge deal. Think of like business. You think of executives presenting to their teams or to customers, client meetings. This is really cool stuff. No. Magnifico. Pas mal, mais est-ce que Maxine comprend aussi d'autres langues? Oh, yes, absolutely. Maxime me permet aussi de parler français et bien d'autres langues. Hier würden mir über die Magie von Maxime erzählen, aber du musst dich bis zur nächsten GTC gedulden. Bleib dran, damit du nichts verpasst. Wunderbar, ich bin dabei. This is an excellent example of how AI can be used for daily applications. I mean, this is breaking down language barriers allowing us to do business in other countries that we couldn't do business in before, communicate with people we couldn't communicate with before. I think this is great, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. We're just getting started. And as these guys continue to accelerate this AI, some of the technologies that will be created from this and some of the things that will be unlocked, I don't even think our brains can fathom it quite yet. Okay, so that was Maxine. That's NVIDIA's web conferencing AI. Now, it's just one technology, one takeaway that I want to bring to you today out of five. And the next one I want to cover is Omniverse Avatar. And this is going to show you that video with Toy Jensen. Check this out. Let me welcome back Toy Jensen, an application we built with Omniverse Avatar. Remember, Toy Jensen is not recorded. 
He's completely real time, making eye contact, making conversation, and fully animated. I got a few questions for you. Sure, ask me anything. What is synthetic biology? Synthetic biology is about designing biological systems at multiple levels from individual molecules up to whole cells and even multicellular assemblies like tissues and organs to perform specific functions. Can you give me some examples? Some current uses of synthetic biology involve creating biofuels engineering bacteria with useful properties not found in naturally occurring organisms, developing biosensors capable of detecting environmental toxins, producing biopharmaceuticals, and manufacturing chemicals via fermentation rather than petrochemicals. TJ, that was great. Can you tell us how you were made? Avatar is a framework built on the Omniverse platform. It lets you quickly build and deploy avatars like me. What's also exciting is that I can be run from the cloud, the data center, or any other disaggregated system, all thanks to Tokyo. Tokyo is an application built with Omniverse Avatar, and it brings customer service AI to retail stores, quick service restaurants, and even the web. Okay, so that was Toy Jensen. Maybe you really liked Toy Jensen. Maybe you thought he was a little bit creepy. Maybe he got some Terminator vibes, some Skynet vibes, hard to say. But either way, it's really cool technology. What I think is really important to highlight there is it's Omniverse Avatar. So it's using the Omniverse platform. And what's really exciting about Omniverse, you think a lot of people think Metaverse. Omniverse has tons of real world use cases. For example, Amazon actually uses NVIDIA Omniverse for their warehouses to make those more efficient. They actually use them for the robotics to, to create a digital world, basically a recreation, a digital sample, so they can use that to plan out how the robotic systems works and things like that. There's a 90 minute video, the keynote video that goes into this and covers tons of use cases, but not just Amazon. You think of biotech companies using this. There's some really cool stuff going on with, with gene therapy that NVIDIA is a part of. When you think of the industrials, you think of manufacturing, they're using what they call digital twins, digital twins to make those predictive models to basically make a, a digital sample of something that's real in order to, to use that to make predictions. And actually even recreating the weather, trying to create a predictive model that shows us what the weather might do a week in advance. So they're using this Omniverse platform for a ton of different use cases. And I think it's just getting started. There's a, a lot of opportunity with this within the NVIDIA platform. AI, the creation and production of intelligence. So we have created the NVIDIA AI Accelerated Program to work with developers in the AI ecosystem to engineer solutions together that customers can deploy with confidence. NVIDIA AI democratizes AI so that every industry and company can apply AI to reinvent themselves. The computing infrastructure of ML Ops is fundamental and its engine is the Ampere Architecture A100. <laughs> Today, we are announcing the next generation. The engine of the world's AI computing infrastructure makes a giant leap. This stuff right here, guy, I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> as someone who's really into technology, I can just nerd out on this stuff. I mean, we are going to a whole nother stratosphere when you look at the H100 chips and what these things can do. You have to watch the 90 minute video because it's absolutely breathtaking. But check this out. Introducing NVIDIA H100. The H100 is a massive 80 billion transistor chip using TSMC 4N process. A single H100 sustains 40 terabits per second of IO bandwidth. To put it in perspective, 20 H100s can sustain the equivalent of the entire world's internet traffic. Let me highlight five groundbreaking inventions. I mean, Jensen, you can highlight as many inventions you want, but you already got my money. Like, I, I don't, I can't think of another time, you know, Tesla and NVIDIA are two where you watch these presentations, these AI presentations, and just, they blow your mind and they get excited as an investor. And I, I'm not one to like hype things up, but I'll tell you what, like watching this makes me very, very bullish on the future of NVIDIA. It makes me want to even have more shares of the stock this is great stuff, guys, and I hope you're enjoying, you know, my version of this 90 minute video and kind of putting my own spin on it and sharing my my thoughts with you guys. So hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys appreciate it. This one took a lot of time to make. So hopefully it's it's an entertaining one. And if it is, guys, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe now, click that bell to get notifications. You want to help me out and get this one in the algorithm so other people can see it. 
Drop me a like, drop me a comment, share it with your friends, watch the video again. I appreciate you guys. Let's keep moving on. For AI processing, Hopper H100's four petaflops of FP8 is an amazing six times the performance of Ampere A100's FP16, our largest generational leap ever. Confidential computing today is only CPU based. Hopper introduces the first GPU confidential computing. Hopper confidential computing protects the confidentiality and integrity of AI models and algorithms of the owners. Software developers and services can now distribute and deploy their proprietary and valuable AI models on shared or remote infrastructure, protecting their intellectual property and scaling their business models. Okay, so that, that's massive, and that's the fourth one I wanted to cover today. It's massive for, for obvious reasons, and I wanted to show that clip because it really just explains it for you. But being able to lock down your AI and use it in other models like that, use it in other scenarios for businesses, this is going to be really, really big, and it's something that we really haven't experienced before, so it's going to unlock a lot of different doors. And 768 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. 768 terabytes per second. In comparison the entire internet is 100 terabytes per second. At traditional scientific computing, EOS is 275 petaflops, or 1.4 times faster than the fastest science computer in the US, the A100 Power Summit. At AI, EOS is 18.4 exaflops, or four times the AI processing of the world's largest supercomputer, the Fugaku in Japan. We expect EOS to be the fastest AI computer in the world. EOS will be the blueprint for the most advanced AI infrastructure for our OEMs and cloud partners. Let me update you on Grace, our first data center CPU. I am pleased to report that Grace is progressing fantastically and on track to ship next year. We designed Grace to process giant amounts of data. Grace will be the ideal CPU for AI factories. And this is Grace Hopper. A single super chip module with direct chip to chip connection between the CPU and GPU. But I only told you half the story. The full Grace is truly amazing. The Grace CPU can also be a super chip made up to two CPU chips connected coherently over NVLink chip to chip. Grace Superchip has 144 CPU cores and an insane one terabytes per second of memory bandwidth, over two to three times the top Gen 5 CPUs that have yet to even ship. All right, guys, so what I did in this video is I tried to take 90 minutes, the keynote presentation from the CEO, Jensen Wong. I tried to cram my favorite pieces into a 15 minute video or less Hopefully I did a good job. If you appreciate the effort, drop me a like, drop me a comment, share this with your friends, help me get it into algorithm. If you really like this, check out the 90 minute video, go to NVIDIA, go to their YouTube page and check out the 90 minute video. I guarantee you'll be blown away by the rest of the information. It is jam packed from start to finish, really good stuff. So I'm an NVIDIA shareholder. I'm very long, very bullish. Hopefully you appreciate this video guys. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.